Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals but without all the voodoo. I'm back for another video in my collaboration with Head Audio. In this video I want to talk to you guys about speaker stands and decoupling because those two kind of go hand in hand and I have a definite opinion about it. So that's what I want to share with you today. Basically to show you what you need to do, what you need to worry about or rather not worry about so you can get back to focusing on things that actually matter. But before I get into it real quick, if you want to watch the rest of the videos in this series, have a look at the link in the card. And if you're in the market for a new speaker, a head speaker perhaps, then have a look at the link in the description. That's an affiliate link. If you buy your head speakers through that link, you'll be supporting me and Head Audio obviously at no extra cost to you. But with that, let's get into this. Real quick disclaimer, anything I'm about to tell you really is aimed at home studios, okay? If you go further up the food chain in terms of studios, in terms of acoustics, in terms of quality of sound, priorities will change when it comes to speaker decoupling in, in, in particular. But you really need to go all the way up to the food chain for this to change. Okay, so just keep that in mind that we are talking about home studios, what is practical, what is feasible, and in terms of priorities, what you need to put your focus on. So let me make the first point and the most important point, and I'm going to emphasize this again at the end. Decoupling on its own is not really a problem you need to worry about in the home studio. Okay. In terms of the, the, the size of the effect, if you will, it is at least an order of magnitude less impactful or smaller than anything and everything else you can do to improve the sound in your studio and kind of get your, the sound to a place where, where it really helps you to mix properly and get your mixes to translate, okay? Decoupling is way, 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 way down the priority hierarchy, okay? I know this is popular. For some reason, we keep spending way too much time thinking about it, but just keep that in mind, okay? Just realize, remember that decoupling is really not that important except for maybe that one scenario where you put your speakers directly on the desk surface, which you shouldn't do, and I'll tell you about that in a second, or if you have one of those producer desks with kind of the speaker shelves and you put your speakers directly on those shelves. I have seen instances where the speakers really transfer energy directly into the desk and really make it rumble, really make it vibrate. That is the one kind of scenario where you would want decoupling. But even that's not a given, okay? So basically it becomes a non-issue unless you have a severe coupling problem, okay? And that brings me to my advice for this entire video basically and I'm not going to beat around the bush here, here's what it comes down to. Ideally, in a home studio, if you have the space, get decent speaker stands, put your speakers on those stands, and forget about any type of decoupling. It's just not necessary at that point. Once you've put your speakers on proper speaker stands, there usually isn't a coupling problem, okay? If you can't do that and you do need to put your speakers on your desk or if you have one of those producer desks with one of those shelves, by default invest in some decoupling solution, yeah, but don't spend a huge amount of money on it. Basically spend as much as you can afford, as much as you're willing to invest and just do that by default just in case you do have a coupling issue. And, and basically at that point then stop worrying about it, okay? <laughs> so that's, that's my, my advice my practical advice for this video. But if you're still with me, let me get into why or what decoupling is about in the first place so you, you understand how I came to this recommendation, okay? So 
first of all, with stands, what, what's the point of speaker stands? Well, the whole point of speaker stands is to get the speakers into the right position. <laughs> it's that simple, okay? So typically ear height, and we're talking about uh, the stereo image, obviously having the speakers in the right positions to allow your brain, the psychoacoustics of your brain to actually create a proper stereo sound, uh, sound stage. Sorry, That's the point of the stands. The point of decoupling is for the speakers to not transfer any energy into its supporting structure, right? So, so through vibration, the speaker might vibrate and it might transmit that vibration into the structure it is standing on. And so that structure might start vibrating and then retransmitting that energy into the air, which then interferes with what the speakers are playing and basically washes out or, or distorts the sound, the clarity of your speakers. Okay, so that's the point of decoupling. The major problem with this is that any decoupling solution also needs to stop the speaker from swaying, moving, as the drive unit moves, right? So in response to the driver playing the sound, the speaker cabinet might move as a reaction. And we don't want that happening because that will obviously distort the, um, the actual pushing of air of the drive unit. Right? So we need, if, if we do decoupling, we need to do it in a way that doesn't make the speaker move or allow the speaker to move as a response of the drive unit moving. And that's where things typically fall apart with most decoupling solutions that are meant for kind of two-way, three-way speakers, your typical home studio speakers. The problem is that with physics as it is, and your typical two-way, three-way speaker, you can't solve the decoupling issue without creating a wobble issue. So you're just trading one problem for another. And the, the reason is that decoupling basically works by creating a mass spring system, which you may remember from physics class, and you tune that in a way that the resonant frequency, so the frequency at which this mass spring system likes to oscillate is far below any of the frequencies that you want to stop from being transmitted. Okay, so obviously with uh, the audible spectrum, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, we want this natural frequency of the mass spring system to be probably at like 10 hertz or below that even. Now to do that with a typical speaker like the Type 07, typical two-way speaker that weighs about 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, is that you need a spring that is so soft that it can't stop that wobble from happening. So in practice, these springs are typically silomere, silomere, I'm not sure how the, you call the products, these, these pucks, or in the US often sorbethane, sorbethane hemispheres, right? And those are, those are the kind of the, the springs that we typically recommend or that are typically recommended for decoupling. But with those, they're usually so soft that you don't end up with a stable platform. So unfortunately, physics dictates that just trying to decouple a, a weight that you typically find with a two-way or three-way speaker, it's, it's just not possible without creating a wobble issue. And that's the main problem that I have with all the off-the-shelf decoupling products out there. Right? They just haven't convinced me yet that they've solved this problem. So either they stiffen the spring to the point where we don't have that wobble issue, but what that means is that the natural frequency of the mass spring system also lies much higher up. So at that point, we're not really getting the decoupling that we want. And so the product doesn't really work, at least not as they promise. Or they do something else to solve this wobble issue. But none of them have really shown me that they've done this properly. I mean, there, have been, there are attempts, but <laughs> they're, they're just not that convincing, unfortunately. So it remains an open question whether these decoupling products actually work.
That said, what then would an ideal solution look like? Well, in order to solve the softness of the spring issue, what we need to do is we need to massively increase the weight of the thing that we're trying to decouple. Okay, so in practice that would mean taking the speaker and mounting it to some stand or some mass that is possibly 10 times heavier than the speaker itself and then decoupling that entire thing. So choosing a different product or a different uh, sort of category in the product catalog of Silomer or Sorbethane offerings, right? That we then use to decouple that entire huge mass. That also gives us the advantage that there's so much inertia of that mass that will resist that movement of the drive, drive unit much better. But obviously, in a home studio, who's going to do that? Yeah, we're talking about um, units or, or weights of, of speaker stands and speakers combined in the hundreds of kilograms, possibly. Yeah, so this is just massive overkill for a home studio where the priorities just are somewhere completely different. So with that, I hope you understand why I don't really recommend you spend too much time thinking about this. In terms of the, the magnitude of the effect, it's very small. And in terms of how we can actually reliably solve that, that problem, it's just massive overkill for your typical home studio. Okay, so if you're contemplating about, about decoupling the next time, just remember this. Ideally, you want to put the speaker on separate stands if you have the space and then you just forget about decoupling altogether. If you need to put your speakers on your desk or on those shelves of your producer desk, get some off the shelf solution just in case, but realize that the verdict really isn't out yet on how well these products actually work. They probably do something, we just really don't have any kind of solid data on what exactly they do and how they do it. And obviously if you need even more help with this and you want to go deeper into understanding where that fits into the whole process of setting up your studio, check out my free workshop at the link in the description. This is the Phantom Speaker Test, how to set up your speakers no matter what room you're in. So my step-by-step -step process to help you figure out in your home studio where you should place your setup, what the best spot is in order to get the most out of the room and the speakers, how to then set up your speakers in order to get a sound stage, a stair image that sounds like you're working on headphones and all this step by step with all the typical questions that pop up, including speaker stands and decoupling. So again, if you need help with that, check out my free workshop at the link in the description. And with that, let me wrap up this video. I hope my message was clear. Don't worry about decoupling so much, but get back to what actually matters, like learning to trust your ears and having fun working on music in the studio. See you in the next video.